Curtis, congratulations on being named Derby County captain uh, today. How does it feel? Um, it feels good. Um, obviously, to be named captain of his football club is an honour, of course. Um, doesn't change me, you know. Um, I'm the same person, whether I've got the armband or not, I do the same things. Um, last time I was named captain, I actually didn't play many games. I got injured with my Achilles, so it's good to finally have the armband back properly. Um, but, you know, I've, I've had the armband enough for this football club and, um, yeah, I'll just be trying to help the team as I always do. Was there much of a conversation with Liam Senior? Did he, did he let you know in advance? Um, just it's kind of like the, the worst kept secret as such. It's kind of people come to me about things, people talk to me about things, obviously, in the games I've been the captain. So um, it's kind of lent towards that. But obviously, Liam addressed it yesterday and said that he wanted to make it formal and, and name me as, as captain. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted. And I don't take it lightly, of course not. But like I said, it, it doesn't change anything that I'm going to do. I'm not going to be extra busy on the on the pitch or anything like that. I'll just be um, doing my job as normal. I think I'm running saying you've, you've worn the armband at, at least once for, for every club you've played for or, or, or thereabouts. Leadership, is that is that something that's always come naturally to you? It is in terms of, if I think back to, to being young, obviously, yeah, captaining youth teams and stuff like that or district teams. And, but, um, you know, down to organising lads' holidays and stuff like that, I'm always, I'm always that guy. So um, it kind of comes hand in hand. Um, I'm a big talker in terms of off and on the pitch. So, um, yeah, I think sometimes it, it comes a bit more natural to people um, than others. You know, like I say, there, there are different ways of doing it. You can have a captain that is on the pitch and, and being the main, main man and, and making things tick. Or you get a vocal captain that is able to, to help others um, and, and to help people get through games and other situations off the pitch. And you have a, a formal vice captain this season as well. Max Bird, talk to us about him and, and about the decision to, to make him vice captain. I think it's a great decision because he's always been the, shall I say, the, the, the young lads captain. Again, he's similar to me. He's the lad that organises everything. He's the one that gets the permission slips from their parents and um, gets their packed lunches sorted out and stuff like that. So, um, no, all joking aside, Birdie is, is, is aged beyond his years. So, um, He's, he's a very smart kid, he's um, very thoughtful in everything he does and like I say when it comes to them young lads when they first came into the group, Birdie had been there since 16 years old training with us so they kind of all lean towards um, Birdie anyway and um, I think it's a big thing for him in terms of officially to have that stature you know to obviously if there are any games that I miss hopefully none but he'll take the armband and he'll wear it with pride and, and have that responsibility that he knows comes with it. When you look at the group, are, are, is this going to be a, a sort of an easy group to captain when you look at the experience, the know-how and the leadership that you have in the ranks anyway? Yeah, it, it is because ultimately there's, there's ways of doing it anyway. If you want to be the captain that's the dictator and doing this and telling everyone this and that, then, you know, that, that's not me. Um, this group takes care of itself in terms of we've got good characters that don't need to be knocked down a peg. Um, we've got good players that usually know their jobs, know their roles. Um, so it should come easy. You know, we've got a lot of players with a lot of games behind them, promotions, um, experience throughout. And even the young lads, like I say, because they're willing to listen, they're willing to learn. It's not ever going to be a time when you have to pull them to the side and have an individual chat because they're always listening. Um, so I think this group is, again, easily led. It's, it's group led. Um, it's just, I guess I'm the focal point of it. And just a word on, on things on the pitch. Um, game on Tuesday night and you're back in action on, on Saturday. How do you feel about pre-season as things are going? Um, I think it's, it's building up well. Um, obviously, I know there's a few people getting carried away with a defeat to Stevenage three days after beating the Bundesliga team. But... That's what happens, you know, when there's a bit of excitement and a bit of um, expectation of us, you know, it, that's going to happen. But um, I just say that we're working towards Oxford. <laughs> you know, I think if you think back to when Newcastle got beat 7-0 by Leighton Orient in their last pre-season game before the season started, and they went up that year. 
So I think don't get carried away by pre-season results. It's about trying to build something, trying to get people used to their roles and um, trying to get people used to each other's roles because ultimately as much as I've played against these players and, and seen them for years, I don't know their full strengths and weaknesses until I've trained with them week in, week out. And unfortunately for us, we've had about 10 days, two weeks together. So, um, you know, it'll come together. We're quite confident and um, yeah, just stick with us.